So in this video, we're going to consider how to write a good scientific question and then how to write a hypotheses based on, on that scientific question here. So let's start with an example here. Uh, in order to make a good question, uh, the scientists would have to be uh, making good observations. And let's say you're, you're, you're driving around and you come across a few fields and you see that uh, in most fields you have uh, corn corn crop growing there and the corn seems to be going quite well in some in many areas and in other areas the corn doesn't look uh, as robust or as healthy so uh, let's say that we sampled a couple of plants from one of the fields where it was growing well and then another one here and then you start to ask well I wonder why if you knew both uh, uh, fields where uh, the corn was planted at the same time why does it seem that that uh, in some areas, the, cro the corn is growing better. So uh, you suspect that it could be a few things. So you check the rain gauges and you notice, well, they're all receiving the same amount of water and, and so on. And so um, you might not be uh, suggesting there that it's the water that's example. And then you go and you sample the soil and you notice that in the areas where the corn plants seem to be smaller here, you notice that the soil happens to have lower uh, magnesium levels. So now that starts to give you uh, a better questioning. And uh, one question might be uh, not, not just why is the, the corn growing differently in the two areas, but now that you know that one area has lower magnesium soil or less magnesium, uh, so you might be asking a more specific and really good scientific question is why does or does magnesium affect plant growth. And so that would be your, your scientific question there. So uh, from there, now you have a basis for writing a, um, a question. Uh, so you might even be more specific. You might say, does magnesium uh, cause plants to grow better? Or does magnesium deficiency, which would be low uh, soil magnesium, cause plants to grow lower? Now, to be clear, you didn't run an experiment. You've just collected some information based on observations. So if you are going to truly test if magnesium affects it, you need to bring this into a controlled situation. So it's a good hypothesis, uh, or should I say question, and the hypothesis might be that magnesium does affect uh, the soil, but you need to be able to bring that in and control the situation so that all possible factors that can influence the growth of this corn can be controlled for, and you're only testing what you suspect is magnesium. But before you do that, you have to be able to write a hypothesis here. So um, your lab manual on page three, uh, this goes back to your biology one uh, uh, lab exercise. So this, in some ways, this is a review, and it's applicable because when you're doing uh, science, you're doing these methods. So we're reviewing them uh, through this exercise, and it defines what a hypothesis here. And it's basically a statement that's looking at a relationship between the variables uh, so uh, that you're considering here. And here we're looking at, in the case of the observation with the corn, one variable might be growth and the other one might be the magnesium, for example. So keep in mind that if you're going to write a good hypothesis, this statement right here gives that guidance. It says that a good hypothesis is going to identify uh, your organism, especially in biology, it's an organism or a process or both that you're looking at. It's also going to identify the variables. So you must mention the variables. Generally, the experiment is going to have two variables. The one you're in control of, which is the independent uh, variable, the one that you manipulate. And then the other one you're looking at is the one that is the response variable, the one you're seeing if there's an effect on. Now, in this case, if we're going to experiment with the corn plants and the observation of lower magnesium, then we're going to be testing magnesium so you're in control of how much magnesium you give the plants. That's your independent variable, your test variable. The variable you're going to be seeing if there's an effect on, that's the response variable uh, or your dependent variable, and that would be growth in this case, right? So, um, And then you're going to be also suggesting how you're going to compare uh, the situation here. So uh, there's generally going to be two kinds of hypotheses you're going to write. There's going to be uh, you're going to, in practice, you're going to do two hypotheses. You're going to write a null hypothesis. 
And the null hypothesis is in practice what we're really going to test. Uh, and it's part of the reason we do this is because uh, uh, the statistics that are used, there's uh, statistical methods that are used, more formal uh, ways of analyzing the, um, your data. They, they, it's a lot easier to test uh, a null hypothesis than the hypothesis you think is going to happen. The reason we're doing this is because we think magnesium is going to have an effect. But the null hypothesis says, look, if I mess around with magnesium and I manipulate how much magnesium these plants get, I'm going to assume that's going to have no effect. Uh, in the groups that I'm testing, right? So I'm going to test one group with lower magnesium and the other one with just normal magnesium or normal soil. And so you're comparing the two and you've changed the magnesium. That's your independent variable. That's your test variable. And you're going to assume no effect here. So generally speaking, your test, uh, your null hypothesis is going to indicate that the test variable in this case, gen we're generalizing here, but in this specific case would be magnesium. But more generally, your test variable which is also called your independent variable. That it has no effect. On the response variable. And another uh, a name for the response variable would be dependent variable. Okay. So, and the key here is no. Okay. That's what null hypothesis. You're going to run the experiment. You're going to have this already stated. Magnesium does not affect the growth of the corn plants. That's your null hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis is just the opposite. You're going to think that there is an effect. And you can be very more specific. You can state that you think magnesium, uh, low magnesium is going to decrease the growth. You can be that specific, or you can just be a little more general and just make, just get rid of the no in the statement and just rewrite the same statement. So you would say that your test variable, again, in the example with um, uh, the magnesium, remember the test variable is called the independent, uh, affects the response variable. And so in this case here, magnesium affects growth of the corn. That's your alternate, right? Or you could be more specific, low magnesium levels decrease its growth. Of it, and that would be more specific. But the alternate basically is saying there's going to be some influence. Okay, so of your test, your independent variable on your response variable. That's the basic idea there. So if we went back to this case here, how would we write our null and our alternate hypothesis for this specific case? We were generalizing here earlier, okay? So remember, you have to have your variables in that statement, and you have to indicate the organism or the process. And in this case, the process is the growth, and the organism is the plant. So why not include both in there? So let's write, we're going to symbolize our, our, our null hypothesis, H with a zero, uh, a subscript of a zero, or H naught. And so here, we can just say magnesium level or concentration, and then does not, or you can say has, no, there's that keyword right there, no effect on corn growth. This is both your organism and the process. Here is your variable, magnesium level, uh, and then the, the no. That makes it null hypothesis. The alternate is very simple. Just make it a positive statement that something's going to happen, right? Again, your test variable, magnesium level, affects corn growth. And there's uh, this statement also has, it has your uh, test variable, it has your dependent variable or your response variable, and then what the relationship is between the two. The relationship is there's going to be a fix. So uh, when you do an experiment, you need to be able to write both and understand both, and then you're going to test to see um, which one the data supports. Now, there's a key thing here that I want you to remember that 
you're going to write these things before you even run the test and you don't change them. Okay? You're making some predictions. Okay? The real prediction is the alternate hypothesis, but in practice, you test to see if the data is going to support or reject it. Notice those are key words here because you can never prove something in science. You can only provide data to support or reject. In fact, here's a big idea here. Nothing is ever proven in science, not even gravity, not even the laws in science are, are proven. Um, but they're tested constantly over and over again. Uh, and they're modified as the data requires. And in some cases, they're rejected altogether. Like they used to think the earth was the center and the sun moved around it, but it doesn't fit the data, so you have to change that model, right? In other cases, hypotheses may change as data requires, okay? But you never prove those things in science. Now, it doesn't make hypotheses and theories in science blind guesses or just a guess, like um, uh, I know what happened to my pencil yesterday uh, type of thing. Uh, in science, a scientific theory okay, is well supported, uh, but it's not the same as a hypothesis. Hypothesis is what you're doing uh, for a small bit of information you're trying to collect uh, overall. So keep that in mind. Never use the idea that the data ever state that your data proves your null hypothesis or proves your alternate hypothesis you can never do that. The data is either going to reject your null hypothesis in favor of the alternate, or you're going to accept the null hypothesis based on the data. The data never proves uh, anything. Here. So that's a big idea. So that's uh, how you write a, your hypothesis for a scientific investigation.